In Russia's Bryansk region, a weapons arsenal may have been attacked on the night of October 9. The warehouse allegedly housed ammunition from North Korea and guided aerial bombs, according to Andriy Kovalenko, the head of the Center for Countering Disinformation at the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. According to Kovalenko, the 67th Arsenal of the Main Missile and Artillery Directorate of Russia's Ministry of Defense, located near the city of Karachev in the Bryansk region, was hit. The site is approximately 114 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. The head of the Center for Countering Disinformation said the warehouse contained ammunition, including supplies from North Korea, as well as guided aerial bombs. I should note that some of these were stored in the open air, Kovalenko said. In September, Ukrainian forces attacked two large arsenals containing missiles and shells in Russia's Tver region, as well as an important ammunition depot in the Krasnodar region. On the night of October 9, explosions were reported in the Bryansk region. Online sources mentioned a fire with detonation and shared corresponding footage. The regional governor confirmed a drone attack. There were also reports that the 67th Arsenal of the Main Missile and Artillery Directorate of Russia's Ministry of Defense was hit. Ukrainian forces have not yet commented on the night explosions in Russia. Пали бы нахуй, запустили нахуй. Ну да. Ukraine is entering its third winter of a full-scale war unleashed by Russia. In the east, the defense forces are losing ground under the onslaught of the Russian occupation forces, although it is costing the invaders huge losses. In Kiev, as well as in Washington and some western capitals, the mood is changing, the Financial Times reports. The determination that the war will end only when Russia's army leaves Ukraine is being replaced by a grudging recognition that the best option is a negotiated settlement that leaves most of the country intact. But Kiev lacks support even for that goal. Ukraine's prospects are clouded above all by the possible victory of Republican Donald Trump in the US elections. He has repeatedly said that he wants to end the war quickly. Some US and European officials hope that Trump can at least be deterred from forcing Kyiv into an unfavorable deal with Moscow that would create serious risks to European and American security in the future. But as the war in the Middle East escalates, even some Western capitals that previously insisted on the need for a military victory over Russia are rethinking their goals. Some Kyiv officials also privately complain that they lack the manpower, firepower, a Western support to take all the territory Russia has seized. So behind closed doors, there is talk of a deal in which Russia would retain control of the captured territories. Moscow retains de facto control over about a fifth of Ukraine, which it has occupied, although Russia's sovereignty over it is not recognized, while the rest of the country is allowed to join NATO or given equivalent security guarantees, the newspaper writes. 
Under this umbrella, Ukraine could also recover and integrate with the EU like West Germany during the Cold War. But such a scenario rests on ambitious assumptions. One is that the United States and its allies should be prepared to offer Ukraine NATO membership or the necessary guarantees. But they have so far been reluctant to offer Kyiv guarantees of joining the alliance. This would require a huge and costly deployment of forces by the US and its partners and would leave them on a Cold War style stretch. The article says, the second assumption is that Russian President Vladimir Putin could be persuaded to negotiate and accept such a scenario. But preventing Ukraine from joining NATO has been one of the Kremlin's stated war aims. It is also doubtful that Putin has any incentive to agree to land for peace talks if he believes his army can still conquer more territory.